Native American Oral Traditions in Comparison to the Written Word of the West by Ariana Farrow. Imperative Aspects of Oral Traditions Narrative, Performance, Subjectivity, Memory, Immutability. Narrative refers to how do people use these stories to interpret the world around them. Performance is the use of storytelling. We'll go into a little bit more detail later. Subjectivity is the interpretation of life events through the personal experience of the storyteller. This one can also be related to human experience. Memory. This is an active and ever-evolving process, which is often shared by collective cultures and groups of people. And finally, mutability. This is the ability for these stories to change certain aspects while maintaining key lessons. And here we have origins of the written word. Writings appear to have been evolved from an extension of picture signs, signs that directly and iconically represented something or an action, and then the word that bore that same meaning, which then opens up for what's called character script, such as that is Chinese, in which each word is graphically represented by a separate individual symbol or a character or by a sequence or two or three characters. Writing systems of this sort have appeared independently in different parts of the world. And if you look up at the top right, here we have the evolution of the alphabet, which is kind of interesting to see how it first started as picture signs, moving to character scripts, and finally the incorporation of letters. Here's some aspects of the Western written word. So we've got grammar, spelling, punctuation, structured sent. I'm sorry, sentence structure. <clears throat> Aristotle had once expressed that speech is the representation of the experiences of the mind, and writing is the representation of that speech. Alphabetic writing, which broadly has consonants and vowel sounds, are indicated by letters in sequence, which is the widespread system in use today, and it's the means by which literacy has been decimated, but it's not the only system and it's certainly not the earliest. So as I said earlier, we're going to go into performance, and I really wanted to look at performance versus reading. Performance plays a huge role in oral tradition storytelling. It keeps the story interesting to the listener, thus more memorable as a lesson. It's comprised of gestures, emotions, vocalizations, songs, things of that nature. It's the responsibility of the performer to keep the audience or the listener engaged in the story. It's a collective experience shared by members of the tribe, as opposed to, lead to reading. Reading is often done alone. You must be educated to partake. You have limited resources. And again, it's really a one-person activity, unless if you're reading aloud to others, but it doesn't have the same mutability or subjectivity that performance does. So oral traditions versus written stories. Oral traditions predate written stories, and it's a collective versus individualistic experience. Clear interactions between the deeply rooted oral tradition and the developing literacy traditions of the 20th century. That interaction is revealed in the placing of literacy works in the forms of the oral tradition. The impact of the epic on the novel, for instance, continues to influence writers today. Critics weary of oral history tend to frame oral history as a subjective and biased in comparison to writings presumed rationally with objectivity or an objectivity. In Western context, authors of written documents tend to be received automatically as authorities on their subjects, and what is written down is taken as fact. These assumptions ignore the fact that the authors of the written documents also bring their own experiences, agendas, and biases to their own work. That is to say that they are also subjective. Ultimately, the divide between oral and written history is just a misconception. Writing and orality do not exclude each other. Rather, they are complementary. In contrast, written history does not present a dialogue so much as a static record of an authority's singular recounting of a series of events, just that singular account of a series of events. 
As readers, we may interpret these writings, but the writing itself still remains the same. Oral narratives, on the other hand, do not hold to be, need to be told the exact same way. What is fundamental is whether or not they carry the same message. And finally, I really wanted to go into the ethnocentric arguments against oral tradition, which I really is what believe is what's driving this misconception of oral traditions. <clears throat> Number one, it's easier to justify conquering, better way to establish dominance over other cultures. But the argument of oral traditions in indigenous cultures being uncivilized and in need of a more Western outlook has been perpetuated by the oppressor. It is much easier to justify to history that those conquered were needed, were actually in need of a civilized settler to sustain longevity. This is seen in the vernacular used in Western conquerors. Indigenous peoples describe them as oppressors, whereas Westerners call themselves settlers. It's these small differences that truly accentuate the ethnocentric arguments against oral traditions are really just based solely upon oppression. Thank you.